Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone. It's Valentine's night. So who's single in the room here? And who's married? Yeah, I'm married. So any excuse? 17 years marriage. Oh, I have to do this thing for Kim. Sorry. No. So um, I'm David. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit about our company. It's Retail Excellence. I was going to say holdings, but the main company is Retail Excellence. So we, we support all the retailers in Ireland, about 2,000 members, everyone from Apple Green and Arnott's to Zara, Zest and people like that. So all the progressive guys. Um, and I founded the company 23 years ago. So we've kind of grown and now we've other companies. So we've a gift card company called um, From Me To You. Do you know One For All? So we hate them. <laughs> and they charge really aggressive commissions to retailers and it's quite negative because you could earn your One For All gift card and work really hard and go into a shop and they'll say, is there any other way you can pay? Cause so our, our company um, competes with those guys and we run town cards. We've a card in Limerick, Waterford, Port Leash, Nace. We're about to launch in Dublin. And we've a publishing company, we've Ireland's largest retail industry magazine, and we've other companies, a consulting company, work with county councils, so I personally work with Waterford, Wexford, Limerick, Tipperary county councils on town revival stuff. So I'm totally out of my comfort zone. I, I'm great talking about retail trends in the future, and I sit in a global retail council and we meet in New York, and I'm great talking about e-com, I sit in the board of e-commerce Europe, and I'm great at talking about time revival and all that. So Kim asked me to talk about you're all events people, that's correct, is it? Okay. No. You should be in the meeting next door. <laughs> so look, I'm going to talk about some of the history of the, the milestones, the journey, with a bit of a focus on events, which are fundamentally important to us. Is that okay? And then we can have a chat. So look, I was working in London back in 1994. I set up, well I didn't, sorry, I, I helped a guy set up a, a business called The Tanning Shop, Stand Up Tanning. Yeah. And um, we grew it from one store in Albemarle Street in Mayfair, where I lived, to uh, 140 stores. And then I, I decided I missed my mammy, so I came home and, and moved in with mammy and daddy in Ruff Arnhem. They weren't happy. And this is, a, this is what was then called Talla Chamber of Commerce up in Whitestown in Talla. It's, it's now South Dublin Chamber of Commerce. Um, and the CEO at the time heard this fella, David, came back from London, knows a bit about retail, and he asked me to come up and have a meeting. And um, he said, look, the square, the largest shopping centre in Europe, has just been built, and it casts a massive shadow on the village of Tala. And can you help the retailers? So uh, I said, fine, we'll, we'll try it. So we, we invited eight or ten retailers for a cup of coffee in the canteen um, there. And the chat, we just, it was like your little group here. It was a little group and we helped each other and talked about our problems. <coughs> and as the years rolled on, as the first year rolled on, we got more confidence. So they were saying, well, we go to London and look at some retail stores. And then other chambers of commerce heard about it and said, Jesus, you're able to make retailers happy. They're always given out to us. So we opened eight regional offices in Wexford and Waterford and Limerick and whatever and set up little groups of retailers. And then one day I got, I got up and out of bed and I said, the day has come for us to take it away from the chamber movement and run it as a standalone entity, not for profits, with its own board. So that, was, that came at about 99, 2000. So um, to today, we're, we have a lot going on. So um, I suppose from the start we decided to do five things, but we also agreed three rules as a, as a, as a network. Yeah? And, um, I think that's important. So one, with education events, we said there was a dirt of education in retail. Um, people didn't see it as a valid career. And we also said there was no real retail expo or big events to really celebrate the industry. All, there's 282,000 people working in retail and, uh, and there's, nobody's out there shouting about that. So education events, number two, awarding body. So you've set up the retail awards now in its 21st year. Um, so try setting up an award, it's kind of difficult you know, National Store of the Year, and you've three entries. <laughs> but it grows to today where it's, it's, it's a huge production. We spent over, on one night alone, we, spent over, we spend over 300,000 euros. We bring in the biggest digital video wall, and Hector and the wall opens, and it's a huge production. But we want people to really be proud of what they do and the fact that they're in the room, the fact that they've made it. Uh, three is lobby and communicate. This is the bit I hate. So. Um, 
we have a lobbying team of about four people. Uh, and I know a lot of politicians and Leo and all that stuff, but just the knowing that stuff isn't going to get done kills me. I know I can run a big conference or a big awards or publish a magazine or sell tens of millions of gift cards, but it's quite frustrating trying to talk to government and get things done. Uh, four is retail data and trends. So we, we get data from hundreds and hundreds of retailers. So I got all the data from Dublin Airport, Shannon, H&M, Zara, Oh, right down to Shaw's department store and we aggregate it and we report on about 22 sectors every quarter in terms of what's going on. Um, and then finally is service and support. So we have um, HR support, legal support. We have our own copyright exempt music. So you can play music in your store without having to pay IMRO PPI and lots more besides. So that's it. The three rules. Everyone who joins has to engage, participate and share. So we're not IBEC or we're not Chambers Ireland. We're we're a, we're a movement, we're a community of people that give a shit, that want to support each other, and, um, and it's really positive, you know, and the amount of members who've helped members, and, and, you know, Shaw's just opened their first cafe ever in, in Waterford, and it's one of our guys, I introduced them. Psycho Superstore in Talla, do you know it? They opened a juice bar in a restaurant, and that's Bart Glover, who owns Kay's Kitchen, and um, that's, it's flying it. So all these connections, it's amazing in business, you know, how relationships and positive networking can um, have such a really brilliant influence on, um, on your business. So look, um, we span all of the industry. It's quite boring. But everything that's retail, we touch, okay? Uh, so when I said we had a board, we did. The board rotates every couple of years. That's the board today, lots of people. Kim's husband is there. Do you see the, the, the bald, slightly balding guy there? This one here, look, see? I'm not allowed, move. I've moved out of the box, sorry. <laughs> Him, yeah, so that's that. But look, we're small and big, so we're, you know, we've, we've, Jean, who owns Willow Boutiques in Ennis in Galway, she's tiny, you know, small business. And there's Joe Barrett, who just made 90 million floating apple cream. He owns apple cream with Bob. So, uh, so big and small, and provincial Ireland, and, and cities, and so it's, it's every aspect of retail, lots of sectors, and all the rest of it. So, I suppose, look, at the start, it was a great, positive journey, you know. Um, that's me and Fergal Quinn. We, we co-presented um, the first award, <laughs> me and Fergal Quinn. It was, do you know Fergal Quinn? You're all young. <gasps> so he, he founded Super Quinn and made millions. And, um, and he's just a genuinely decent guy. He's now a senator, and um, he's a brilliant businessman. And, and look, there's September 11, so the year after September 11, to the day, we were over in um, Saks Fifth Avenue with retailers showing them around and behind the scenes and, you know, it's just, so this is all positive stuff. We go travel the world with retailers and show them the future and they loved it. It was, it was brilliant, you know, it was really positive. Um, that's me drinking pints. So, like, what we did was we created a network of positive people who got on well and wanted to be the very best in retail. That's it. And it's, it's not a membership organ, it's a movement. It's a movement of people. Um, and everything was going great until, uh, do you like that Grafton Street look? Until 2008 when things collapsed, obviously. And we were all paying too many, much rent and rates and everybody was struggling. A real struggle. So I suppose um, it really got me as the person who's responsible for everybody's job and who's responsible for all our members who travelled to water one night because I thought one of our guys was going to kill himself. Um, and he didn't. It got me to kind of think about what should we do? And what I realised is actually we're doing the right things, but we're just doing too much of it. We're doing too many things. But let's do one or two things in each of these boxes and do it brilliantly. Brilliantly. So, let's do this brilliantly. So what we, we did was we said our annual retreat, our conference, we call it a retreat, it's two days. It used to be in kind of Carton House. And we said we're really going to invest in this and make it the must attend event in Ireland and globally if you're a retailer. So it got so big that we had to move from Carton to Croker. And it got so big for Croker that we have to move to City West last year, last May. So we took the convention centre and built out this huge expo. We brought in our own food village. Imagine that, doing all of your own food stalls, all artisan food and wine and drinks. And it was amazing. It was amazing. Best of speakers, like 50, 60 speakers, seven stages, two and a half thousand people, two and a half thousand retailers in Ireland. That's not bad. So it, it's, it's, it's huge, it's huge. This May coming, and I'm at Premark just there, um, we want to uh, 
we'll have all our partners there who sell services, and they have a little box. We'll have two and a half, three thousand retailers at it. But we'll also have, I'm, I want to bring students, so we've got 25 colleges, Trinity and UCD and whatever, bringing guys, students who are studying retail, or who are studying business but have an interest in retail, and we're going to have a career stage, and they're going to hear about brilliant careers in Apple Green and Air and whatever. And it's great. It's, it's great. So um, we run our own managing development program, which is huge. So this bit, the camera has to stop, but we make about 70K for every iteration of that. It's a five-day program, and we take these people who, who want to be store managers, and we turn them into the most brilliant people ever. And owners ring me and go, what the f*** are you doing there now? Mary was very upset and annoyed, and she hates working in retail, and she's come back into the shop, and she's jumping up and down like a mad thing with her plan, dying to, dying to kind of grow sales and make things great. And then finally, um, we invest hugely in our awards, um, hugely. So uh, we'd have about, uh, all told, about a thousand entries, stores, websites, managers, rising talent, political advocate of the year, which gives us lots of influence in government in terms of who's the best politician, a friendliest place, which we run with the county councils. So I live in Ennis, and they won it a couple of years ago, and I'm almost embarrassed because every Every sign when you're arriving in Ennis has our logo and the fact that they're the friendliest place, um, which is kind of cool. So uh, that, that's, that's what we do. Um, we invest hugely in, in, in building and they will come. Uh, and um, the content that we provide has to be absolutely compelling. And if my team aren't thinking creatively about what we're doing, uh, you know, I give up. So like we thought about City West and the fact that the food in City West isn't the best, and we agreed, we'll do our own food. We'll build our own village. It costs money, I had to pay someone eight grand just to oversee it. But it, you have to do it. Um, and a simple example is, uh, I brought some retailers to New York there in January, I'm, I'm having dinner with Jonathan Shaw, Shaw's department stores, largest department store chain in Ireland, and he said he was meeting an old college buddy of his the next day, a guy called Anthony Huckle, and Anthony happens to have moved to the States, he's now in Florida, where he's CEO and president of um, Southeastern Grocery Group, which has about 600 stores. And I said, I want him at the retreat. You know, I want him at the retreat. So he's coming. He's coming to May, and he's going to be on News Talk. He's going to be interviewed. All the ads we're going to do for the event, it's going to be talking about Anthony. So, uh, you know, you have to sometimes take a bit of time out and say, I can challenge myself to do it better and differently. And there's no coincidence that we've grown big, because I spend loads of weekends writing notes, letters to people I've never met. Can you please come? Come to Ireland and speak and whatever. So last year we had the president of Victoria's Secret. Isn't that good? Come to City West. <laughs> oh my God. So look, um, on the road we've built assets. What does building assets mean? It means that, it means that you're actually solidifying your future and making sure that you're going to be around and solid and, and vibrant and, and, and profitable into the future. So events come and go and trends happen. The big trend I see in events in, in, my retail, in the retail industry globally is people don't pay for events anymore. If they're retailers, they go for free. The suppliers pay, the expo people, yeah? But that um, causes its own challenges because you give a free ticket, retailers don't respect it, they don't turn up. And likewise, it turns into a sales fest. We have a rule for every um, one supplier in a room, we have five retailers. We will never breach that rule. Because your husband, Fergal, Arboretum, when he comes, he wants to talk to other garden centre owners like Orchard or whatever. He wants to talk to the food guys, he wants to talk to lots of guys. And yeah, he'll spend a bit of time with a couple of suppliers, but yeah, he doesn't want to spend his day with suppliers. So that's our, that's our model. So assets. We, um, yeah, we have a magazine that goes to four and a half thousand retailers in the country. That's an asset. Why? Because I decide on what goes in it. So the retailers are always desperate to kind of, David, can you profile our new store? Or David, can you... That gives us some influence over our members. But also we profile some partners. So um, that helps them hugely. So like, as an example, that's Jane who owns Willow. That's um, Jane who owns Inglot. Do you know Inglot? They have four stores in the UK. They're flying. And that's Jim, who's one of the partners in Grand Thornton. And we hosted... Uh, I was getting so pissed off with hearing that retail is dead and the high street's dead and everything's working dead uh, and everybody's looking at Devlin's going oh god retail and I'm going Devlin's are just shit retailers guys Does, look at Tiger stores, look at Sister Screen, look at Inglot, look at loads, chopped, freshy 
So we kind of the main feature was about these guys, 30 guys who are open up 300 stores. And that's the truth. So with that, we, we've co-founded with uh, e-commerce Europe, Europe in my trust mark. So you go on, so somebody in Paris goes on the Arboretum website, her husband. Never heard of it, doesn't know. When we get my money back, is it a scam? But with the trust mark, we can increase their basket values by 26% and increase the conversion by 22. Because this is a European recognized standard that the retailers must keep, yeah? Uh, we spent a lot of time and money and whatever getting to know politicians, regional constituency um, groups and all that stuff, and, and we've supported politicians. Um, we've supported people we believe in. Um, and then the gift card that we launched uh, in 2015. So look, I'm nearly done. So this is the kind of, is there any commercial people in the room? Oh, oh. So this is, this is the, I'm, not, not, I'm not trying to blow smoke or I'm not trying to have a big head now, but um, my group accountant tells me this is important. So this is our main engine company. It, it's not the gift card, not publishing, not whatever. So back in, um, where are we, 15, we did about um, just over 600k in membership and engagement. The biggest piece of that is engagement. What's engagement? It's turning up, entering the awards, coming to the retreat, all that stuff. And we did a very small little bit of partnership, about 300 and something k. And it's going, 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 going. To today, where we're, we're actually, this is the prudent P&L. My commercial team has a different P&L that says they're going to do over 2 million. Now that's small, I know some of you guys probably have bigger businesses, but when you're collecting checks for 250 quid for membership, doing 2 million, is a, that's a big enough number, you know? It's a, it's a, it's a hard enough road travelled. So look, um, that's it. I suppose a final point, just some lessons now that I'm really old. Uh, and by the way, I turned 50 recently, and you know what? I got a barbecue as for a birthday present. And you know who gave it to me? Her mother-in-law. <laughs> Isn't that decent? <laughs> so lessons on the journey. So this is an internal one for us. So we're retail excellence. We preach excellence. We tell retailers how to be the very best. So if you preach something, you have to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself, you know? Um, so if everything we don't do is, is not excellent, I have a serious problem, serious problem, in terms of how we answer the phone, how we engage, uh, everything, every, collateral, everything. Uh, so I'm sure you have diverse clients and stuff, um, and we have diverse clients. So we, we have um, some major corporates and we have some really small butcher down the road guys. And we represent them all, but we speak from the middle ground. So anytime I'm on a prime time, or well, I used to be, I don't do it anymore. I, sp I literally think of William Canan in Tipperary, who has four sh footwear stores. And that's all I think about when I'm answering the questions. All I think about. So I'm not talking about McDonald's, or Subway, or Circle K, or I'm not talking about Tiny Weenie Weenie, middle ground. Uh, forge meaningful and deep relationships. And I think this is something um, we miss sometimes. So social media, the cameraman doesn't do it, he's right, he likes talking to people. Um, so I, I've been lucky in that um, I've done that and I love it. I love the people. I love our members. I'm, like when I got married 17 years ago, one half of the church was just retailers, my half. <laughs> uh, and um, I, I love Fergal and I love lots of the guys uh, and girls. Um, listen to and support your board and stakeholders. So. I have a volunteer board, um, don't get a cent, but they're our members and they, they speak for our wider membership. And uh, it's, it's, it's really important to do that, you know. I don't know if you have, um, if you ever have client focus groups or sometimes you get too stuck in the detail that maybe you take a day and go, go bring five, six of them away and just say, look, how can we do better together, you know? Are we missing something? Um, Support and empower your team and think big, which is what we do. Um, and I, I know support and empower your team is, is you can just say it, but we, we and I'm not trying to make myself out of being good because I've fucked up loads. Um, we young guy, Sean, so I'm great at uh, recruiting people. So I'm on one of the boards of UNICEF Ireland <laughs> and they had their annual lunch there in December. And um, we went into piss. And it's now, uh, it's now one in the morning, and I'm in Hang Dai on Camden Street. And there's this young guy, and he's 23. And I go, what do you do? And he's a Bank of Ireland payments. And I said, tell me, what, tell me about your life. And he told me about his brothers, and he's the eldest. And he told me stuff that I just went, ding, 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 ding. 
So I said, OK, I'm going to offer you a job, but I want you to do the following things. And he did all the things. And he jumped the hurdles. So that guy is on, whatever, 30K. He's a junior guy. And he started us with us, with us in January. And um, he came to me two weeks ago and he said, David, um, I know the student union president in, um, in UCD and maybe we get the shop in UCD to join. Oh, yeah, big deal. You know, it's probably 500 quid membership. Grand, go do. And I met him today. And he signed up 25 student unions and now we're doing all the student stuff, bringing 300 students to our retreat and next year we'll bring a couple of thousand students and all of a sudden everyone's going to be going, shit, I need talent. There's a war on talent. So I brought him to the big pre-mark meeting today at 2 p.m. And we have the directors of pre and their global headquarters in Parnestri. And this young guy was brilliant. He was brilliant. So I won't tell him now, but <laughs> he's got a huge future with us. Okay, um, what's that say? Demonstrate emotional intelligence and mean it, okay. So that's, 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 that's important. So I suppose, uh, and my last point, and I have a little bit of video at the end then, I'll finish. Um, the, um, what time is it? Okay. What time? Seven. You're okay. okay. So, um, emotion, we sometimes don't get emotion. Sometimes we're, we're, we're stuck in the, just stuck in it all the time. And so we don't take time out to think or whatever um, about people, you know. And, and I listen to a lot of nonsense about the future of retail and technology and innovation and blah. And really, the future is just... Um, well, here, I, I spoke at a thing in Lille recently at a conference. Enterprise Ireland flew me over and they brought all these tech guys and um, they asked me to close the conference and there's thousands of tech guys in the room. And I'm going, because I'm looking at them and they all have this technology that probably gets in the way a lot of the time and we're forgetting the fundamental of retail and the f future of retail, the future of events, the future of business is H to H. It's human, human. It's getting on with people and supporting people, and that's it. And your mum, mother-in-law, knows that. Um, and in that regard, um, last point. So at the awards, we started the awards 21 years ago, and um, th about 16 years ago, um, I met a guy called Patrick Hanley, and he's a young guy from Tipperary. And um, as it turned out, he, he went to London, and he, he, um, he had a good career in retail. He became the chief executive of Harvey Nicks. And I, I rang him and said, Patrick, we'd like to do something we've never done before. We'd like to give you a lifetime achievement award for what you've done. And he came over and we gave it to him. And he was happy and we were happy. About five years later, Senator Virgil Quinn, Super Quinn, Virgil, the time has come for you to probably, for us to recognize what you've done in the industry. And um, he came and we presented him with a lifetime achievement award. And then at the awards in 2017, <coughs> I, des I decided I didn't want to be the chief executive anymore and I wanted to go, I was going to be the group chief executive and I said, the last thing I want to do, I want to do one more of these lifetime achievements. So I've only done three now in 21 years, so it's not like we're handing them out like confetti. And, uh, and uh, the person we all felt that deserved to be really, really um, lauded for their brilliance and innovation and, is a lady who, who, who many years ago opened up a garden centre in her back garden uh, and now runs the best garden centre in Europe. And, and um, sorry, I forgot that. That's another fellow. We, we do mad things. So that's Patrick Burke, 90 years in business, third generation in Ennis, and we're up in City West, and I got Paul O'Connell to school. You know Paul O'Connell Rugby? To hand him this award, 90 years, and he's crying. Isn't that good? Yeah, I can make people cry. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, Kim. You push the button. So this is the video we showed in front of 700 people black tie event in Killarney in November 2017 to recognise Rachel Doyle and give her her lifetime achievement award. So this is, I wish I had the film from the room because there was people crying. And this is um, this is Kim's mum in law, and I'm only showing it just to say sometimes when you take time out and do special things for people, it can be tremendously positive. is that real need to cultivate the soil and bring forth from the earth. What you did 40 years ago, what you continue 
need to do today is quite amazing. Starting off with a small garden centre at the front of your house, and now look what it's become. One of the very best garden centres and garden operations in the world. My goodness, I remember a few years ago when I was filming with Rachel, she's showing me a photograph of the up and over garage, which was beside the bungalow that she got when you got married, and that was where the arboretum started from. And my goodness, what an amazing 40 years it's been. I know you, Rachel, I know three most important things about you. One is you're passionate about business, about heart culture and about plants. And I suppose from my perspective, having worked in the heart culture division in Borbea for a number of years, you've always been there on the board to give some advice, some help and some mentoring. Uh, and of course last year achieving that fantastic national award with REI. I think that says it all about you as a business person who's a heart culture. So congratulations on your award tonight and see you soon. special person and no better person to be given this lifetime achievement. Well done Rachel from all of us. Thank you. Rachel, you've been an outstanding and selfless contributor to the horticulture industry and to board BN. Your creativity, your commercial sense, your long-term perspectives have provided a platform for all of us, both in the industry and in Borbia. You are generously sharing at all times. You challenge our thinking, you brainstorm new ideas with us, you get us introductions almost anywhere in the world. We always know we can call on you, Rachel. Congratulations, we're so proud of you and we're delighted for you. It's an absolute honour, and I'm delighted to bestow on you the Lifetime Achievement Award for what you've contributed to retail, not only for Arboretum, which you've been, which you brought from its uh, infancy 40 years ago to what it is today, the tremendous success. And I'm delighted for what you've contributed to Arboretum and to retail in Ireland to bestow this award on you tonight. Congratulations, Rachel. Rachel Doyle, uh, what, what a contribution she's made to, to the garden centre sector, to the retail industry, to humanity, to getting on with people and supporting people. She's created a brilliant business in Carlo, now in Kilquaid. She's raised a brilliant family. Barry and Fergal are such brilliant guys. So Rachel, I'm delighted that this year you're winning this tremendously uh, important award. Enjoy it. a great leader to us all but most of all you've been an amazing mum and an amazing friend enjoy your night you deserve this hi ma'am congratulations on winning this prestigious award you've been an inspiration to so many people that have worked in Arboretum over the years and for both Fergal and myself working alongside you over the years you inspire us every day congratulations we're so very very proud of you I'm delighted at this opportunity to send my sincere congratulations to Rachel Doyle as she's presented with the Lifetime Achievement Award by Retail Excellence Ireland. Rachel, you've built Arboretum from your garage into a world-class retail business and Borbia's first ever five-star garden centre. You're a fantastic example of Irish entrepreneurship and innovation and your success will encourage many others to follow in your footsteps. This award is richly deserved and I want to wish you and all your team continued success in the years ahead. Congratulations. So, that's our moment now. So, uh, and everybody stood up and it was a brilliant night and cried. And so, I suppose from nothing in Tala in 1995 to having many thousand people in a family that's positive and supportive. Um, it's been a brilliant journey and thanks for your attention. Thank you.